This video is sponsored by Mailgun. More on them later. Hello and welcome back to yet another Python tutorial and boy do we have a project in our hands today because we are going to be using Python to automate our personal finances. You're going to be learning how to use CSV data and essentially clean it up using Python into exactly the kind of format that you want. The second thing you're going to be learning is how to use Python libraries. And the third thing you're going to be learning is how to integrate Python with Google Sheets. But why is this application actually useful? Ever since I started actually tracking my spending, my spending has actually gone down because when I started actually seeing exactly where my money was going every single month, I started realizing that, oh, shit, I am actually spending a hundred pounds a month just on subscriptions, half of which I don't even use. So are you excited yet? I am definitely excited. So why don't you grab a cup of coffee, open a code file in your favorite code editor and let's get going. We're going to essentially do all the heavy lifting of setting everything up first and we can just apply some Python magic to do a lot of magical things. First of all, we need a way to access our transactions in a file, which luckily most banks allow you to just download your transactions in a CSV file directly from your website. For this, I can't give an exact tutorial, unfortunately, because it is going to depend on your bank. You just need to find a place to click download on your bank transaction sheet and then click on CSV. What CSV stands for is comma separated common separated values. I have a couple of bank accounts and I've downloaded a couple of them. The one that I use the least because for privacy reasons, I don't want to reveal all my bank transactions. We're going to import a library called CSV. And I would recommend naming these files in the same sort of format that I've done, which is the name of the bank underscore month. We're going to define a variable called file. We're also going to define a variable called month. The file name, we're going to do an F string, HSBC, which is the name of my bank, underscore, and then brackets, the month. Then you're going to type these lines. Essentially, all of this does is allows you to access the lines from your CSV file. If you just go row in CSV reader, we're just going to print the row to see exactly how it's going to allow us to access this data. And it doesn't work because I forgot to add the ending to the file name. Here's what we get. And if you just compare it to the actual file right here, for my bank, the way they've organized the transactions is that every line is the date, the first item of the line, the second item of the line is the name of the transaction, and the third one is the sum of the transaction. Each of these rows in this CSV reader object is going to just be essentially a list where the first item is the date, the second, is the name of the transaction, the third, the sum of the transaction. Before we do some more magic with these numbers, we're going to need to do some more setting up, namely setting up access to our Google spreadsheets. And now there's going to be a quite a few steps here, but don't worry, I'm going to walk you through every single one. It's all going to be okay. Take a deep breath and let's go. What we want to be using is this library called Gspread. We're going to pip install Gspread. You do that. Now I've included a template down below in the description that you can download to get the exact same format in Google Sheets that I'm going to be using. The first thing you need to do is enable API access for a project. You're going to click on that, head to Google Developers Console. It's probably going to give you some window where there's going to be a create project thing. I've already done it, so I don't have that, but you're essentially going to create a project of that. Click on APIs and services and credentials, create credentials, service account key. You fill out this form, you just give it some name and it automatically gives you this ID. Done, I don't really know what these fields here do. It doesn't really matter, I just left them blank. Then you're gonna find your service accounts on this service accounts tab from the left. You're gonna click on these three dots on the right, manage keys, create a new key. You're gonna select JSON and it's gonna download this file, which is gonna be really important. It's probably gonna go to your downloads folder next. What we're going to be doing is moving this file into this specific folder on your computer. And then you're going to call it service underscore account dot JSON. And little secret, I don't even know exactly what it does. I'm just following the instructions here. Now your file is going to be in the right folder and everything should work. Now the last thing you need to do is you need to open up this JSON file using a text editor. And there's going to be this email address, client underscore email, which you're going to need to copy. Then you're going to go to the Google Sheets template that you downloaded from me, or if you created your own one, go to the top, you're going to click on share, you're going to copy the email address and then click done. Essentially, this is going to give you access to access your own Google Sheets file. Now, to see that everything works, you're going to go back to your code file, you're going to import and you're going to paste these two lines with the name of the sheet file that you want to be working with. In my case, I've named it personal finances. 
And then we're gonna run our code, drum roll. Let's see if this works. Everything works. We have successfully established a connection to our Google Sheet. Give yourself yet another pat on the back. Now we can start inputting our data from our CSV file using Python into our Google Sheets. Now, if all of this is confusing to you so far, it's okay. Take a sip, relax. And while you're doing that, a word from our sponsor, Mailgun. Okay, bonus Python tip. Email. With Mailgun, you can start sending emails in just a couple of lines of code. Here's how it works. Sign up to their free trial, which gives you 5,000 free emails using the Mailgun API. You can even add your own domain. Then it's essentially just gonna give you a couple of lines of code in whatever programming language you're using. So we're gonna copy this code, then gonna give you this API key and this API based URL. So we're just gonna copy this down here, this one replace here, I'm gonna click enter. Let's see if we've got an email. We've got an email. It works. Isn't that magical? Mailgun is how modern companies send email. Because where Mailgun is especially useful if you have any sort of product or business where you're sending marketing emails regularly, which is a crucial part of the marketing process, by the way, you can use Mailgun send time optimization capability, which will automatically find the ideal send time for each and every individual on your list at the time that they are most likely to engage. I think that's pretty dope. Go check out Mailgun today, and you can do that at mailgun.com slash internet makeover. Thank you for Mailgun for sponsoring this video. I think that is the end of our coffee break. Now, now is where the real magic happens. First, we would need to think about, okay, what would be useful things for us to actually extract from our transactions? For me, it's the date, it's the name of the transactions or where it went, the sort of category of what category of spending that was, as well as obviously at the amount. As you can see here, it tells us the name of the transaction and it tells how much. It doesn't tell the category, but I'm gonna show but essentially what we're gonna be doing is make our code a bit like AI, like a bit intelligent, where it's gonna recognize what transactions belong to which category. Let's just grab the date. And the way we grab the date is that we can see that it's the first member of this list. So it's just gonna be row bracket zero. Name is row one. And for you, it's probably gonna be different because your bank is probably gonna display them in a slightly different order. It might have a whole bunch of data in here. You just need to go and look at this file and see which indices of these rows are the ones that you want. And lastly, we're gonna grab the amount and that's gonna be row bracket two. And for this, you can see it's actually a string. We wanna grab this as a float. So we're just gonna put it inside the float function. And we also want to know the category. Um, but for now, we're just gonna put category as other. And I'm gonna show in a moment how you can make this a bit more intelligent than this. Then we're just gonna create this transaction variable with the date, name, amount, and category. And at the end, we'll just print it to see that it works. As you can see right here, now every transaction, we've got the date, we've got the name, we've got the amount, and we've got the category, which for now is just other. We're also just gonna create this global variable called transactions. It's gonna house all of our transactions. And for now, it's just gonna be an empty list. And at the end, instead of printing it, we're gonna append it to the transactions list, making progress. Now, how can we make this category something other than just other? Just for this very simple version, what you can do is like, for example, I know for a fact that this one right here, H3GDD is my phone bill. So I can just go, if name equals this, I can set the category to be phone bill, for example. And I also know for a fact, this one is my Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. These names are going to be exactly the same because what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be running the exact same code for all of our months. And ideally, all we'll have to do is change this month variable at the top. What I can also do, for example, is create this subscription names variable. And then I can go if name is in. So if name is one of these names, then we wanna set the category to be subscription. Well, and there's an error because I've accidentally tried to append the transaction to itself. Now we can see that we actually have categories. The point here is that once we run this for every single month, Next month, the code is going to know that if the name of the transaction is this, it's going to be a subscription because we'll told it to. Okay, now we have access to all of our transactions. We have saved them in this transactions variable, but now we're going to apply the final piece of magic to get this to Google Sheets. And now at this point, if you don't wanna use Google Sheets, you can go do with this data whatever you want. You can even do things like create a sum variable up here, and then this amount where every time is gonna add, do the sum. So after all of these transactions have run, we can also access the sum. So we can see exactly how much money went in or out of your bank account. We can immediately see that in March, my total was minus 63 pounds in this 
in this month, in June, it was 23 pounds, etc. But at this point of the video, if and only if you enjoyed this video so far, you know, my like button down below in the description has been telling me that she's been feeling a bit lonely lately. So we would both highly appreciate it if you could go down there, just give her a little tap, it would make both of us feel so good. You don't need to smash, a little tap is enough. And to show both of our appreciation for you doing that, here is a picture of a cute dog with some flowers. Thank you so much for doing that. Now let's get back to the project. Okay, if you do wanna input this into Google Sheets, what you got now going to do is after these lines of code, you're gonna access the worksheet that you want. By going worksheet equals sh dot worksheet and the name of the worksheet. Now, the, and the way I've done it in my template is that each of the sheets is just named after the month. And because we've already got the month variables named up here, we can just dynamically access the correct sheet using this name right here. And then we're gonna create an, a variable called rows, which we're going to get by running this function up here. So actually what we're gonna do here is wrap this beginning part of this code in a function. I'm just gonna call it hsbc fin, taking in the file and the subscription names. And then this, and instead of printing stuff, we're going to return transaction. And we're gonna want to access these transactions in here, so we're gonna go HSBC fin to run this code using the file and the subscription names. Now in this row variable, we've got the transactions by running this file. Before we do anything, just to see how we insert data into Google Sheets. So in this function, the first argument is gonna be a list of the values that we want to insert. And there's gonna be a second argument, which is gonna be in the number of the row where we want to, to insert this information. So as a test, we're just gonna go one, two, three, to row number, let's say row number, 10. And now we're going to see what happens. For now, all of this is empty. Now, when we run this code, let's see if it works. It's, it's loading. And as you can see, we've just inserted some data into our sheet. And for example, it thinks that this is a date. We're not, we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to delete that. And now to actually insert the data that we want, which is our transactions, what we do is for row in rows. Now we need to think about what order we want to insert this in. So first we want the date, then the description, then the category, then the amount. And the way I've designed this template right here is that we want to start inserting from this eighth row. Put row number eight as the place where you want to insert it if you're using this exact template. And another thing that we just want to do is we want to import time. I'm going to go time dot sleep for two seconds. So essentially what this does is that after inserting each row, it's going to sleep for two seconds. And the only reason for this is because Google Sheets has like limits on how many times you can access the API per second or whatever. So we just wanna make sure we don't overload the API. So we're gonna wait for two seconds after each row. So now let's see what happens. And as you can see, the transactions just start appearing on your Google Sheet every two seconds. Pretty darn magical, Python magical. So essentially, all you now have to do is download your CSV for every single month that you want to do this for. Just change this month at the top. You can even do this using shell scripting to like accept the month as a command like argument. I've already taught how to do this in this video that I made previously, so I'm not going to do that again. But obviously there's a whole bunch of things that you can now do with this. And add them to this one summary sheet where you can see all of your months at the same time. Obviously this is specifically for like my needs, how I would like to categorize my things. Just look at how these commands are formatted and you can do everything. What it does here is that if the category of the transaction is a subscription, it's automatically going to grab it to this line of this summary sheet. Now, this is a very simple version of my own program that I use myself. In my own program, there's a whole bunch of other complicating things as well, for example, because I'm in a situation where I have bank accounts in both the UK and Finland, so I am sort of need to do things for like to like automatically convert the currencies, all these functions for all of my bank accounts, including PayPal or all that. There's all this like checking to see like if the name is something, then it's in some category. And I've got all these functions for like cleaning up some of the dates and I've like sending the data to a database. And there's a whole bunch of things that I've iterated over multiple times. But hopefully this video gave you an idea for the most basic version of how you can start tracking your finances using Python and categorizing it then um, you can make like graphs using Google Sheets. There's a whole bunch of things you can do. This has been one of the more exciting projects that I've done for myself. And what I think is the absolute coolest thing about coding is being able to build things that are actually useful for you to automate things that you would be doing anyway, which is exactly what this program did for me. So that is why I wanted to share it with you. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button down below. And if you're new here, 
you're extremely welcome. My name is Internet Make Coder. This channel is the place for people just like me and hopefully you who are self-teaching ourselves coding. At the moment, I'm working on a lot of Python projects. So that is why there's been a lot of Python videos on my channel. If you want to check out more, you can just click on my channel and find my other Python videos. But with that, let's all keep coding and let's remember to have a great time along the way because that's what it's all about. I'll see you next time.